All right, greetings from Charles Village. Uh, this is a critique of a um, boiler installed by others. And of course, I'm at the outset. I'm going to say this isn't this isn't too bad. They did it. it looked like they did a pretty good job all, overall. Um, they mounted the VXT on the side of the boiler. Here's your bypass, um, and there's your backflow preventer. I would have liked to have seen the VXT mounted higher so I don't have to crouch down to read the numbers and uh, otherwise this will tend to get forgotten about and um, ignored. You don't want to do that. Um, it's the service switch. Uh, nice little touch here by adding um, a plug-in for uh, power. Uh, a very rare thing in some of these old basements. Um, they've used uh, metallic cable for wiring, which is good. Flue has been relined by others. Let's see, uh, rating plate here. Uh, looks like an EG40. And they've got a nice two and a half inch um, outlet. They didn't bush in it down too far, which is very, very to the good. So they've got a really nice uh, header there, uh, all metallic, uh, all threaded steel. And a two inch equalizer line and a um, good two inch uh, clean out there for the uh, flushing out the boiler. This is the Harford loop. Now, I would have liked to have seen uh, either brass or stainless here uh, to transition from the copper. Let's go back up here where this ties in. And this is your uh, typical uh, coal-fired piping. This was this would came out of the top of the uh, old coal-fired boiler into this bullhead T. This downward pitched outlets. This is towards the front of the building and goes to the uh, longer main out there. And there is the uh, wet return from that main on that side. And this is a short uh, parallel flow main so you have and this is the takeoff that goes to the back of the house this is a dry return drip and this uh, dry return then goes to this drip which then goes down below the water line and that is the wet return from this take off here, right there, and that goes uh, towards the back of the house. And the other thing, so yeah, I would have liked to have seen a stainless steel on that, on that uh, Harford loop there uh, to uh, make a transition from the copper uh, to the um, steel. I uh, would have also liked them to have installed a drain. Uh, that would have been an extra pain, but um, that could have been done so you can um, at least drain this uh, this wet return. Uh, they, get, they get pretty crusty. Um, this is our sight glass blow down down that we that's our little signature thing and we've also uh, removed a ridiculously undersized uh, drain valve. These things are what come with the boiler. They're pretty pitiful. So we've got a nice um, full port drain. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. Okay, you got a good flow there. Uh, really brings out the dirt and uh, 
helps keep that clean. And speaking of which, uh, one of the major things they did not do was to pull that plug and put a, that's, yeah, they never pulled it. There's no tape or dope or anything there. That's factory. Uh, should have put a, pulled a plug and put a, uh, uh, skim tapping there to uh, allow uh, for cleaning. Uh, the pressure troll was set at its lowest setting, but the trouble is with this particular pressure troll is that, of course, it uh, was way out of calibration. Um, it was tripping off at about, God knows what, four or five pounds. We had to uh, tweak it a little bit to uh, so that it would shut down on its um, low lowest pressure possible, which is a pound and a half, which is what it's designed to do. This is the uh, flexible gas, not exactly fans of that stuff, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So overall, not too bad, and uh, thank you very much.